G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, things aren't looking real pretty in the markets at the moment. And to be honest, I think we're going to see a little bit more of it. It's not all doom and gloom though, but you can't have the kind of exuberance that we have had since, you know, last year and not have a reasonable kind of pullback. And we had some ones that were real quick, you know, like they lasted 24 hours or even if that, sometimes, yeah, even less than 24 hours. Uh, and now we're just simply having a correction that's probably going to go on for a couple of weeks. But it won't last forever. Please don't panic. The crypto market is not going to zero. Bitcoin's not going to zero. This is just normal part of all markets. This isn't just crypto. All markets do this. Just crypto is a whole lot more violent in the way it does it. Goes up a lot harder and comes down a lot harder uh, and can drag out for a little bit longer as well. But that's why we're here. If you want those crazy gains and untold, you know, riches and wealth, well, you've got to be able to take these kind of, you know, uh, downturns. That is simply the way it is, particularly like the last bear market. You know, it took three years for Bitcoin to break back above its old all-time high. There's not too many stocks that do things like that. They might dip down for a while, but then it doesn't take them that long to come back up and go above. We just did a three-year bear market. So get used to it. But anyway, let's move on. So as you can see, the market cap keeps coming down. I don't think we're going to get up to a trillion uh, anytime soon. Look, again, I've been wrong before and I could be wrong. And I'll, no, not I could be. I will be wrong again. But I just don't think we're going to rebound overnight. But I do think we're getting closer to the end of this than I uh, think we are getting sort of uh, further away from it. So I think this continues to go down a little bit. BTC dominance though continues to drop so it means more people are buying into the altcoins that's what people are doing they are loading up on some of the cheap altcoins at the moment uh, and just getting ready for the next wave but look that won't last forever Bitcoin will go on another surge uh, people will pile back into it uh, and the Bitcoin dominance will rise whether it gets back up to the 70% again or not who knows, we'll have to wait and see, or maybe it just continues to slowly but surely fall. And look, the Bitcoin dominance can fall, and that doesn't mean the Bitcoin price has to be going down. It just is at the moment. Things were so euphoric for so long. This is what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to investing, and welcome to uh, particularly cryptocurrencies. Now, as I've mentioned uh, investing, I'm not a financial advisor. I have to say this every video just to make sure you don't think that I'm a financial advisor. I am not. I have no skills uh, or qualifications in that whatsoever. I'm just someone who's been in this uh, crypto space for a while and has seen some patterns and some trends and likes to talk about it on the internet. That's it. Don't go out and do anything just because I think it's all right. Do your own research and work it out for yourself. But moving on. All right, gas prices coming down a little bit. Still too high though. We need those in the single digits. Again, I've Layer 2, you know, ETH 2.0 and all the rest of it, it just cannot come quick enough. You know, if you want to do a transaction on Ethereum at the moment, it's probably going to see you back near 20 bucks, I reckon. I haven't done any for uh, a little while now simply because of those prices. I just know I can't afford to do it. Now, let's have a look. We can see it's just sort of red here. It doesn't look very pretty at all. But has there been any movers? I think there will have been a couple. There we go. All right, crazy ones out of nowhere, Alpha Finance. So look at the uh, roar that this has done. And it's come from outside the top 100. So at the moment, things in the top 100, not doing so well, but a lot of things outside of the top 100 are doing crazy. Now this is only the top 100, so you can see some moves. But I mean, look at Alpha Finance, came from outside the top 100. Uh, GNY came from outside the top 100, and that's what has pushed them into uh, the top 100. Now Terra Luna, uh, it's a DeFi play. Swiss Borg, uh, a, a sort of DeFi play, money and all the rest of it. They're the things that are doing well. And we're going to go uh, and look at some articles about that. But again, Uniswap, Zero uh, X, Synthetics Network. So again, these are all DeFi plays. Uh, and DeFi is generally uh, where the big gains at least consistently come from. Even when DeFi had that kind of moment where it had a pullback last year, it didn't pull back that much and it has just continued to grow. It just got outpaced by Bitcoin for quite some time there. But in all fairness, everything did. 
Uh, DeFi, it's again, it's just get, getting ready. Uh, and I really do think it will be where the biggest gains come from. And if you can get into the right project, I'm a huge fan of Synthetic Network. I do like Uniswap. I did sell it all because it wasn't uh, performing well enough. Uh, and it's done all right. But Synthetics Network, Aave, I like Kyber Network. They haven't done so well uh, at all. But I still like that they, you know, the staking you do with them pays you out in Ether once they get a Layer 2 solution and it's not all getting uh, chewed up uh, in fees. Uh, I think uh, it'll be a lot better. But yeah, really Synthetics Network, Chainlink, Aave, they're my kind of big DeFi plays. Uh, I think that's where the massive gains are going to come from. Don't get me wrong, I still think Bitcoin can do well uh, and Ethereum and lots of others, but I think in some of these DeFi plays is where things will get crazy because we'll have a look. There is going to be some in, in institutional adoption of DeFi in the future. It's just which ones is it going to happen to? We don't know. Maybe it's Alpha Finance. Never heard of them before, really. Don't know much about them, but have a look how they've just suddenly done. Maybe some institutions have seen that. Well, probably not institutions because they can't. Uh, but, you know, someone's got in there. All right, what about losses, though? Because there's definitely been some losses. Look at these losses, though. They're not that bad. It's just people have got, you know, probably a little bit down in the market, most people, uh, and things aren't really sort of happening at the moment. So people have gotten a little bit sad at the moment and think, oh, it's all dead now and nothing's going to happen and that's it. You know, it's all going to, you know, come to an end. It's not, ladies and gentlemen. Sit back, relax, stack sats and chill, as Lark would say. This is just a normal retracement. Let's go over and have a look. So I put this in a while ago, and look, this seems to be playing out fairly well so far. I really will be interested to see uh, how long uh, this pans out for, and if I end up around about right, that somewhere around sort of February, uh, it stops, and it stops around the $27,000, $28,000 mark. Look. If this turns out to be right, it'll be m sort of more luck than anything. Uh, no, no, that's, that's not true. I'll say, but there'll be about 50% luck. Because look, I don't really know exactly what's going to happen with the market. It's just me making a guess based on things I've seen before uh, and in the past, you know, over the last few years. So I could see this and then we rolled over and I was like, all right, well, I think we'll probably roll down more. I know there is some support for Bitcoin around about round down here. And you can see these wicks, they still get snapped up pretty quickly. Now we've got a lot of indecision in the market there and it has sold off. Uh, and yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I think it'll probably keep selling off for a little while more. And you know, I don't have the moving averages in there. We're probably not even at the 50 day moving average, which is probably still down somewhere around about here. I'll have to come back for next time. But this isn't the end of the world. Just let the market, you know, settle down, shake out the weak hands. If you're one of those people that bought and simply can't handle these, uh, you know, pullbacks, then you're just going to lose money. You're going to sell and get, you know, sell to some whale or someone like myself who I'm buying the dip. Uh, as Bitcoin goes down, I'm happy to buy. Could it go lower? Absolutely. Could it go a whole lot lower? Absolutely. I think worst case scenario at the moment is the 200 day moving average is sitting around about $17,000, $16,000. So I think it's somewhere down around about here. It wouldn't be the end of the world if Bitcoin came down and touched it. It is just simply history repeating itself. Bitcoin's not going to zero. It is just a normal, uh, you know, healthy correction. And it's part of what will push us up to the next, you know, who knows what prices. But look, for all I know, maybe tomorrow this just goes bang and shoots all the way up or goes bang and drops all the way down to 16,000. I don't think that. I think we'll really struggle to drop much below sort of the 28 to around about $24,000 mark. I know there's a lot of support around the $24,000 mark. So I think that really would be the worst case scenario is around about down here, which I think would marry up around about halfway between the 50-day moving average and the 100-day moving average. But again, I'm not too worried. I'll buy and hold a minute for the long haul. Uh, I'm not too worried about, you know, short-term price fluctuation. And again, it's only been going down since the 8th of January. So it's the 27th now. We can say it's around about three weeks it's been going down. So for three weeks it's gone down in comparison to... Just 
just wait for this to load. So we've got about three weeks of down price action compared to since the 13th of March last year, it's been going up. Now again, look at these. This happens sometimes, particularly look at this. So this got to a top on the 1st of June and it was going down ever so slightly until the 22nd of July. So that's about six weeks, six weeks of sort of downwards uh, action there. We've already seen this before. It's not the end of the world. Then we had a bit of a Bart Simpson, you know, chart pattern, uh, just to, you know, kind of shake people about. But then it's just basically continued to go up. And we have had some dips and things in here. And again, what was this? How long did this last for? So 29th of November to the 11th of December. So we had about sort of two weeks there of downward uh, movement. And at the moment, we're on uh, three weeks of downward movement. So maybe we have another month or so. But, you know, according to this, and if it's right, we've only got about another sort of two weeks to go. So there we go. That might make about five weeks. There's no guarantees that, you know, this little squiggly line that I drew on there is right, but I think it's going to be pretty close. I think this is what's going to play out. We're going to go down. Would for a while, like I said, it'll be something sort of like this, and then we'll just start to make the next move. But anyway, let's move on. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's still lots of bullish news out there. All right, Circle enables seamless USDC to USD transfers, providing a bridge from banks to DeFi. This is why I'm so bullish about DeFi. It is, you know, finance is all about, you know, not so much DeFi, but just, you know, those kind of things, loaning money, borrowing money, uh, you know, derivatives, all that kind of stuff. And that is now, and DeFi is what that is, just without centralized entities that basically scalp you and take, you know, most of the money for themselves and pay you a few, you know, <laughs> pennies on the dollars that they're earning. I do think uh, DeFi is going to be massive. And look, we go down here. Circle, the company behind the second most popular USD coin, has rolled out a new API that will allow for the seamless transfer of USDC to USD via automated clearinghouse systems. The first exchange to adopt the new API will be derivatives and futures specialists, FTX, looking to speed up USD settlement processes on behalf of their customers. In a blog entry, project manager Ji Kuang Chuang, hopefully I said that right, describe how Circle's ACH API improves connections between the fiat world and the digital world by introducing interoperability among, among payment rails such as card, wire and blockchain transfers. It's all starting, ladies and gentlemen. It is all here, DeFi, CeFi, it's all going to merge. Bitcoin is being adopted uh, institutionally. Ethereum's got, you know, Ethereum futures coming out. Uh, and there's, you know, institutions starting to buy Ethereum as well. It's happening right in front of you. Is it just going to be up, 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 up and it never stops? No, of course it's not. What we're having now is just a healthy correction and it is what we call an accumulation zone. In a bull market, which we are in, you buy the dip. When it dips, when it starts to go down, just constantly scale in. Don't grab all your money and dump it all in in one go unless you're confident that's the bottom. And if it turns out that not, it wasn't the bottom, then that's on you. But don't cry and you know then panic sell and get rid of everything. Again, not financial advice, but this market will probably continue to somewhere around about September this year to February next year. That will be the bull market, you know, peak somewhere around about there. We're going to have some pullbacks. This is all part of uh, the natural process. All right. Here's a reason that maybe Bitcoin's gone down. Miners are taking profits. They've realized some profits. Bitcoin got to 42,000. They were holding on and was having trouble sort of going over 42,000. And they were like, all right, well, let's just sell some of that Bitcoin that we were holding on to. Miners need to sell Bitcoin. They don't hodl a whole lot of Bitcoin. They have to be selling on a regular basis to make enough money to pay the power bills and all the rest of it. When things are really going crazy and, you know, it's heating up and the market's going up and up and up, they will hold on to Bitcoin and sell less of it because they don't need to sell as much to pay for the electricity and all the rest of it. But when it gets to a peak point and they know, then they go, right, yeah, well, now's still a good time to, you know, sell off that extra Bitcoin that we held back. 
because the price just isn't ready to go higher and they can still get a premium price for it. So this could be one of the reasons. Is it the reason? No, I think it's just uh, part of it. Again, I think, you know, the markets have just cooled off a bit. People aren't making the same kind of profits they were. So there's some people selling and taking some profits. Again, you know, the traders who just get in and get out, not the long-term hodlers and that. And look, institutions were probably a little bit scared off by the price rise of how Bitcoin has gone. So they've also gone a little bit cold. Now, not all institutions, there's still institutions getting in. But I think some who are on the fence were like, oh, I don't know. And now that it's starting to go down, they're probably sitting on the fence even more thinking, oh, this is it. This is where it's going to dump to, you know, 20,000. And they could be waiting for those kind of prices. And look, maybe it happens. I think it's highly unlikely uh, for me. Again, I'm just buying the dip. Every fortnight when I get some money, I'm just going to get out there and buy some crypto. Uh, a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum, a little bit of altcoins. And I'm just going to let it do its thing. If it continues to go down, then a fortnight later or a week later, whenever I get some more money, I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to buy some more. Because I know within myself, so this is my belief, it's going to go up. Well, we're not at the peak yet. The peak, again, for me, I believe it happens somewhere around sort of September this year to February next year. Exactly where in there, I don't know. And exactly how high it goes, I don't know. But I'm just along for the ride. And around about sort of August, September, I'm slowly, and I mean that slowly, just going to start to take some profits and I'm going to start to sell off, you know, half of all my altcoins. Again, I'm not dumping them all in August because that might be the worst time. Prices could, you know, triple, uh, quadruple after that. So it will be just slowly scaling out. You've got to work out your own plan and do what's good for you. All right, Chamath. See, he seems he's going to run for uh, the governor of California. So good on him. That will be very interesting. Uh, <laughs> he would have to be super rich at the moment. There is, you know, reports that he bought a million, one million Bitcoin uh, way back in the day. I think 2011, 2012. And I think he paid $100 or something, you know, for them. Or even actually probably less back then. Probably $10 per Bitcoin or something. But reports are... He bought a million of them and he hasn't sold. Uh, you know, he's been quoted as saying on a number of times, Bitcoin either goes to a million or it goes to zero. Well, people have been talking about it going to zero for a really long time uh, and it's getting closer to the million dollars uh, than it is uh, to the zero dollars ever since people have, excuse me, been saying that. So well done, Chamath. Be interesting to see if he can get up. Uh, I think he might make a good governor. Uh, he definitely have. He's got some smarts. All right, here we go. So, a lot of talk about Bitcoin, GameStop, and the price of uh, price of taking on Wall Street. So, I found a very interesting tweet down here. So, Michael Burry, a large GameStop investor made famous by the movie The Big Short, posted on Twitter: "If I put GME uh, on your radar and you did well, I'm general. I'm genuinely happy for you. However," What is going on now, there should be legal and regulatory repercussions. This is unnatural, insane and dangerous at SEC enforcement. So he obviously believes that these stocks are just being uh, pumped to get everyone keen to jump in there uh, and there's nothing really behind it. It's probably fair to say that's, you know, 50% true with just about anything. Why is Tesla worth so much at the moment? Now, I'm not bagging on Tesla. I love Tesla and I love everything Elon's, uh, Elon's doing and, uh, you know, the whole Tesla, you know, industry. But, geez, it went up by a whole lot and it went up by a whole lot in a pandemic. What more did they do during a pandemic that they weren't doing prior to a pandemic? Uh, so that's the thing that makes me, uh, you know, while I agree, there probably is some, you know, silly business going on there. But that's, you know, what the traders do. Uh, that is, you could say the same thing about, you know, cryptocurrencies and everything. Uh, really, a lot of things, it is just human uh, sentiment and all the rest of it. And if people are getting, you know, all caught up in it and thinking, yep, GameStop's going to, you know, well, what did they say? I think it went from $18, uh, yeah, $18.84 to $150 uh, and risen and has risen more than 50% since the close of today. So now at $220, there you go. Look, if people want to jump into things that are pumping like that, then good on them. Look, maybe GameStop goes to more. Maybe it's you know not going to hit its peak until it gets to four, five hundred dollars. 
Now, I don't, I'm not saying that it's going to do that. Please, I haven't touched uh, GameStop. I'm not jumping into any stocks at the moment. Uh, you know, the stocks that I have, they will pretty much, you know, stay as they are. Uh, and the cryptocurrency is what I'm just going to uh, slowly but surely uh, continue to scale into for a little bit longer. All right. DeFi. So DeFi continues explosive growth as markets remain flat. So while markets continue to slide, their DeFi their, their slot continue their slide. Excuse me. DeFi projects like Aave and Uniswap rack up back-to-back -back growth alongside NFTs. NFTs are going to be big. I'm not that into them, but I do believe they're going to be big. So while the incumbents in the top 20 cryptocurrencies by global market cap have continued their slide, DeFi projects are defying the trend. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, Polkadot, Ripple, Cardano, and almost all projects that had a second day of straight losses. The biggest movements came from Polkadot down 5%, Bitcoin Cash down 4.5%, and Chainlink down by 3.6%. Uh, I'll be buying the Polkadot dip and I'll be buying the Chainlink uh, dip as well. But I do think uh, both of those uh, will come down a little bit more uh, just because they had such big... Uh, yeah, markups. But, you know, there's no guarantees, but uh, I'm happy to still buy more of them. So for DeFi projects, however, it was a very different story. Chainlink uh, is sort of DeFi. Uniswap hasn't stopped growing all week, gaining 10% in the last 24 hours and taking the project to the 14th largest overall. Aave2 has been on a tear recently, adding 5.3% in the last day, taking it to 16th overall. And lastly, but by no means, uh, uh, lastly, but no means leastly, Synthetic, a decentralized payment, they're not a decentralized payment network, is up 9.5%, helping it break into the top 20 cryptocurrencies. I think Synthetics, Aave, uh, Chain, well, Chainlink already is, but I think Synthetics and Aave will both be in the top 10 uh, and possibly even up around uh, sort of the top uh, five coins by the end of this market. Uh, I think things like Cardano might have a hard time holding into the top 10. Uh, Litecoin, and I like Cardano and Litecoin. I'm in both uh, of those. Uh, Ripple, again, we need to wait and see what happens with that SEC. I have some Ripple, but until they get clarification, I just couldn't leave any more money in them. All right, this is uh, what makes me uh, think, you know, NFTs, that whole gaming industry is going to be massive. The Sandbox, an upcoming Ethereum blockchain-driven online game, will hold its first public sale for in-game plots of terrain, which are called land. The public sale will take place starting on February 11th and follows several sold-out pre-sale offerings. The game's first public sale will see the release of 1,200 individual plots of land premium, which are priced at 4,683 sand each, which is approximately... $435. Additionally, auctions will be held for larger estates on multi-land plots. Seven medium 6x6 and two large 12x12 estates will be offered to the highest bidder for each on the OpenSea marketplace. It'll be interesting to see what happens. The whole NFT, gaming, you know, uh, virtual land and all the rest of it, I think, uh, yeah, the young kids, you know, they're really into that kind of stuff. And I, I like gaming, don't get me wrong. Not so much into this kind of stuff, but, you know, kids love you know, things like Minecraft and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I think this is going to be huge in the next kind of decade or two. I, I really do. I think, you know, things like uh, Decentraland and Engine and, you know, all sorts of things like that and others in the NFT space have massive upside potential. I think there will be a slower burn at first, though. I think DeFi is where it's going to be at uh, in this bull run. Don't get me wrong. NFTs and all that will still pump as well but I think it's going to be DeFi for this one. And then over the next one or two, I think as, you know, as kids get a little bit older, start getting, uh, you know, having their own money and things like that, and they start to buy into this stuff, that's when this becomes really, really big. All right, last but not least. So EY's Paul Brody expects consumer DeFi ignition in 2021. Uh, completely agree, completely agree. If I had to make a bold prediction... I think by the end of 2021, at least one major financial institution will up the game on everybody else by offering some form of consumer DeFi accessible through their single transaction window to a large consumer base. Uh, EY's blockchain team is always talking to banks and enterprise players, and large companies are seeing things like Square Cash App, that's what they're talking about, uh, publish Bitcoin numbers for its Cash App growing at 7 
100% per annum and they want a piece. Absolutely they do. It will not take long and all the big banks will start to get into this kind of stuff. You know, protocols like uh, Synthetics and Aave and Uniswap and you name it. They are. They're going to have no choice. They will either innovate or drown and die. Well, not drown. They won't drown in anything. They'll die. They'll dry up. Simple as that. And it's just no one wants to be the first. We haven't had a big, you know, kind of bank come out yet and say, yes, we're doing it. But once the first one does... It might take a little bit of time for the second, but once you get two or three, watch them all just flood in. That is how it's going to happen. That's why I think DeFi is where the biggest gains are going to come from. I think truly life-changing uh, you know, money, wealth, let's say wealth, not so much money, will come from DeFi. It's just about which ones they're going to be. There's no guarantees that it is Aave, like I think it will be one of them, or Synthetics, like I think will be one of them, or, you know, Compound Balancer, you know, you name it, there's a ton out there. There's no guarantees all of them uh, will be adopted by institutions, but I'd say one or two of them probably will be. And I've got my bets that Aave is going to be one of them. I've got my bets that uh, Synthetics is also going to be one of them. And I've got my bets that... Uh, Kyber Network will also be one of them. Now, again, there's no guarantees in that, so please don't take any of that as financial advice. And I haven't bet the house on any of them. I've put, you know, a small amount of my total portfolio into those. Like, I think my biggest uh, percentage uh, wise is synthetics, and I think that's at about 8%. I want to increase my Aave uh, to a little bit more. I think I've got even less than 1% in Aave. Uh, it's just that mental thing, you know, you got to buy Aave for $200 per coin, uh, but I do want to increase my uh, exposure to Aave, and I'm pretty happy with the amount that I have in uh, Kyber Network. But also uh, Chainlink, I think Chainlink's going to play a big part, and I think they will be adopted uh, by institutions, uh, and they'll be institutional grade for a lot of things. All right, love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think DeFi is where it's going to be at in this bull run? How big do you think you know NFTs and the whole gaming thing can be in this bull run? Or do you think that there may be still another bull run away before they have you know the really big crazy kind of stuff? Love to know your thoughts down below. Click the like button down below. Click subscribe. Click that bell icon bell icon that way you get notified when i put out videos i do put videos out pretty much every day i almost never miss sometimes life gets in the way though all right stay safe be kind to one another there are some gains out there but it's hard to be on the gain train overall we could have some more downside relax don't panic i'll see you next time